Okay, so a very good morning to everyone. So I will start with Unit 5. Before I start Unit 5, I let you know what is I performance work system. I don't let you know. I will ask questions. Okay, what do you understand about a high performance work system? Any of you want to say about a high performance work system? API, doctor. What is it? Huh? Driving high efficiency or performance? K KPI? Yeah, it's part, part of it. But before that, again, Yes. What is high performance work system? Yes. To enhance uh, employee skill. Enhance employee skill. Ah, uh, betul. System, system tu. Bagi example, apa tu high performance work system? The environment will uh, will may uh, will let uh, get in more responsibility and greater involvement. Can I put mic mention to ah two two voice performance feedback human capital effectiveness. Okay, okay, so more me. Whatever that you all say, it's under the high performance work system. Before that, you need to know what is high performance work system means. Work system, system, okay? In your organization, there are many systems provided for the employee, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What kind of work system, work system is provided? provided? Infotech. Infotech. Uh, info? uh, <clears throat> What's that? Employee, Employee training program. Employee training program. There's a system. What system? Everything will be key in, in the system? Yes. Okay, yes. That is one of the work system. Okay, so that is the meaning of high performance work system. So when we have all the work system in the organization itself, they can identify the employee performance easily. From there itself, they can evaluate the employee performance based on the criteria in the KPI. Now you understand what is high performance work system? So our learning outcome for this unit, I let you know the components of high performance work system and uh, what is the different characteristics of high performance work system and the impact of high performance work system. So these are the learning outcome that we will learn today. So first of all, the common, the common characteristics of high performance work system. <clears throat> first of all, due to have high performance work system, they can create the opportunity for the development of employee. So what is the mean here? Opportunity for the development of employees means it's what? What they're trying to say. Opportunity for the development of employees. They wanted to develop or announce the personal and professional skills of the employee. Okay, that is the meaning of opportunity for the development of the employees. So they can uh, let the employees to join with the training. Okay, so each of them can uh, develop their professional skills, knowledge, okay, attitude, so on. So that's why they are having this high performance work system. So far, understand? Yes, yes. Okay, then the second one. By having this high performance work system, you will be able to provide yourself as a strong leadership because 
from the high performance work system, uh, the top management will be able to look into your performance. So that time, they will be very, very uh, strict to evaluate your leadership skills. So that's why by having this, you will be punctually doing everything. Even your attendance can be recorded. Okay, most of our organizations, we have a thumbprint uh, attendance uh, machine uh, system. Okay, so in your organization, what kind of system do you all have? Some biometric. Uh, apa raja? Biometric system. On the... Itu saja yang normally using lah, basic one. Uh. Jira. 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 Okay. Infotech. What's that? Infotech. It's tracking system. Okay, Infotech. Um, doctor, I have something to share. Yes. Uh, yes. My company, we have a specific learning platform. We call it U Plus internally. So it's a it's a it's a system where all our employees. Uh -huh. uh, from all levels, they'll be they can uh, access to uh, materials like learning materials uh, that we have oh. actually. So that is something that we uh, practice uh, in our organizations. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so okay. Uh, can you uh, share that system or not? Uh, that system can okay. access from your home itself. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I, I can't, uh, doctor, because I am using my personal laptop and that is in my office laptop. Ah, yeah. I have the headshot cloud, lah, headshot cloud, basically, on my, yeah. on my company. Um, yes, it's some, some sort of yeah. uh, club. You, uh, um, perhaps you can search for Cornerstone. It, it, it calls, uh, it, we call it as Cornerstone, actually. It can be used via mobile as well. Uh, so what our organization did is this is actually from uh, it's it's a global initiative actually so they start off all this and mm -hmm. the system basically controlled by the global team and mm -hmm. yeah all other countries will be able to access some sort of yeah, some sort uh, okay of, it's yeah. okay uh, the yesterday's uh, class uh, they are showing me the system that they are using in their company so you can mm -hmm. see how the you know, uh, the way we are using and what are the components they have in the system. Okay, mm -hmm. so the example oh, okay. and ready in the video itself, the read, uh, video itself, so you can watch it. So now why I'm asking this, because maybe other students are able to understand how the system is work, but I'm, I believe that everyone know what is a uh, system and how it's work. So that's why high performance work system, they are more to uh, you know, innovations and creations. Uh, actually in the organization, everyone, uh, I mean the management itself, they want to have this uh, system to help the employees to be practiced and uh, you know, just uh, on track everything. So that's the reason they are come up with this uh, products, everything to show that we are using a high tech by having all these new new products inside their organizations, they can perform their work effectively. So that's the reason they have this system. So next, they want to clarify of roles in the organization. So if you're taking banking industry, banking industry is very huge employees. Okay, they have a very very different different departments. Each levels, you know, if you just look into uh, HQ banking industry, uh, M Bank in Jalan Yap Kwan Singh, you know how many floors and uh, how many departments inside. So their roles to clarify, it's not easy, you know. HR have to uh, have keep their eye all the departments, you know. So what they do. Only the system can help them to identify which employee, which department, and what is their role. So that's why to clarify each employee's roles, only the system can be identified easily. Because they will key in. When you are joining the company itself, they will key in all your detail. So easily, HR can be contacted you anytime. That's why they're having this high performance work system. Okay? Understand? Any question? 
understand okay so the next point will be productive meeting okay some of you uh, can generate your meeting uh, schedule everything from the system itself okay some of you uh, can generate their training schedule from the system itself so that's the reason they're having this high performance work system so all these are characteristics which is um, really they want to have the high performance work system to work nicely to ensure that they can resolve all the issues and problem even to make a decisions also easily they can do a decisions without any conflict so that's why so among employee also if you want to communicate just sending an email by the system itself open communications among employee so all these two define their organization goals and company visions to ensure that all team members can increase their productivity okay so that is the common characteristics so i can give you an example this is one of the examples that juni raza is using previously uh, no more now no more we don't have this we have a different uh, system that is you are people so you are people we have to key in the attendance alama uh, i forget to key in my attendance i uh, see okay i show you how the system work uh. i show you okay let me share the screen Can you see the screen? Yes, doctor. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is our UR uh, system. So if I want to go inside, I have to log in. In then Titari will come in front. Then I have to use my email, uh, Unirasa email. The past two are juga yang code they will send. Okay, hari ni tak ada code. Hey, so I need to do the verification. So many kerja lah. Betul tak? Banyak kerja kan? Tak suka buat kerja-kerja macam ni. Lepas tu Samin. Okay so now. Here. Today I forget already, but okay lah, still have time. So you see, our you are people. You can see the location. You can see the location. They can identify you where you are going all that. So mm -hmm. I'm here. Now I'm at home. I'm here. Okay. So when I in my attendance, it will show late. But anyway, uh, because my class is 11.30 means there uh, should be no problem on Sunday. I can log in anytime. 
Okay. So the locations, they will indicate it here. After that, they can identify whether you are in an office or at home or any other place you are logging. So from there itself, they will know whether you've done your job or not doing your job. Okay, so here you can see uh, my profile, everything, okay, uh, attendance. Uh, so all these are showing how many months I'm working. Uh, this is the report that I can uh, generate from here. Then if I want to apply for the leave, I have to look into the uh, system and uh, key in the detail how many days that I wanted to uh, go for the leave for all that. So this is for the employee. Yeah? This is for the employee. If you want to communicate with the HR means the one more that I'm giving to you, but now no more ready. They are using this. So HR only monitor this part. Okay, HR only monitor this part. So here they will indicate how many annual leave I have. Uh, they also give birthday leave. Okay, compass, uh, composant leave. Then examination leave. If I'm study, I can take this leave, but no. Then hospitalization, uh, marriage leave, tada. Tada bagi. Medical leave, ampa bless. Uh, see, so all these are system that they are indicating to you. Uh, so all these. Then employee benefit, uh, you can see what is the benefits that uh, you will get. So now you understand how the system work. Okay. Can understand. So different organization, they have a different style of system. Okay, this system are very easy for Unireza. Okay, so these are the benefits. These are the benefits. Okay, that's all. So I tapuna using the benefits one. I didn't tapuna. Stop sharing. So now, can you understand how it's work the system? Understand, madam. Thank you for sharing, Prof. Prof. Uh, understand, Prof. Thank you for sharing. Uh, so yeah. different organization, they have a different way for them to proceed. Okay. So my my uni Raza is very simple system. Nothing much. So if you see. Uh, the recording, uh, you can see the difference between uh, institutional education uh, system and the organization system. Organization system are very, very detailed. They go for the training. They have so many things. Okay. So this is the meaning of high performance work system. Okay. Now, the second one. Okay about opportunity for the development of employee, especially training part, okay? So if they want uh, to let the employees uh, know, especially in Uni Raza, if they want to let uh, employees to know about um, training everything, they will send email to everyone. So once they send the email, we have to go inside the system, key in our detail, mm -hmm. everything, and register for the training. So this is how it's work. So in a different organization, a different way they are doing. Okay, maybe in organization, training, everything will be indicated by the system itself sometimes. Sometimes they will send the email to let the employees know that there is a training provided for them. Okay, so this is the way. So the next part will be the proper schedule of thing. This is the, how uh, they are generating the academic meeting date. Okay, first of all, they will key in inside the system. After that, we can generate and see January until December, what are the meetings that we have to attend. Uh, so this is the way the system works. 
in the organization so so far can you understand right any problem any question do you have any questions no prof kenapa no, prof. hari ni semua senyap je ada masalah ke kosera tak jadi ke ha senyap je mendung dak mendung tepi ha apa cloudy cloudy Raining. Oh yeah. Hujan, hujan. Yeah, hujan. Um, yeah. Oh, so you all pun nak tidur lah kalau hujan. Concentrate. Eh? Oh, concentrate. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, tak boleh no. lah. Uh, Prof, hello Prof. Uh, yes. Uh, there is any possible uh, the system will hack by other hackers or Oh, or something, something else. No, that's why. Uh, like what your friend said just now, they cannot access from the home. We, uh, they are strictly controlled by the organization. Only can, uh, only can access when you are being in the company. When you are at home, you cannot. So to avoid all these hacker things. Yeah. It's on the internal server then, right? Ah, only the internal server is there. <clears throat> okay, so understand, huh? Any other question? <coughs> no, huh? Okay, so now look into alignments that are focused on developing high performance work system okay so by having this high performance work system what are the alignments or components that you can i mean the managements in the organization can develop first of all they can evaluate the employee benefit information they can identify which ranking you are and what are the benefits that you got it so they can evaluate based on that even uh, if you want to get promotions or anything, uh, they can refer from your high performance work system, from your attendance, your attitude, your disciplinary problems, everything. Sometimes they can key in everything. Next, they will look into the recruitment expenses for candidate. Okay. By having this also, they can identify how many people that they can uh, got it inside for the organization for the recruitment purposes. Okay, after that, uh, they want to maintain the employee records. Of course, uh, if you are taking banking industry, uh, 1,000 to 2,000 uh, above employees are working in a banking industry. So just imagine how they want to maintain the record of employee if they don't have the system. So that's why they are having a, a system. They can track the employees' uh, records, uh, employees' benefits, uh, employees, uh, all the details, okay? All the details. You cannot lie them. Sure, they will identify from the system itself. So the next point, the scheduling and enrolling employee into tracking programs, uh, especially for the training and development purposes. So they want to know whether you fulfill the hours or not. Okay, in education, we have to fulfill 14 hours. Okay, so in a 14 hours itself, do you attend any training or not? So from there itself, they know uh, in a month, how many trainings that you attended, how many hours. So all these are alignments that they wanted to focus to ensure that they can work effectively. That's the reason. Okay, so to balancing all to achieve the individual and organizational performance, these are the three components. Okay, we need to have uh, unlimited resources. Then performance supports from the uh, management side, your managerial side, peers, all that are performance support, your KPI itself. Okay, then the challenges that you are facing. So all these components will balancing you whether you can perform or not to be performed. So these three things will lead to individual and organizational performance so anything would like to add on 
you want to say something about your company uh, working style system and which is make you irritate the system make you irritate <laughs> never give any benefits yeah just to add in the doctor yes so our uh, hr system is uh. embed together with uh, e e learning oh really okay. when you embed with e learning right you have an annual uh, kpi that you have to meet okay uh, the thing is out of 10 question normally one question just change you know so every year we have the same question we have the same answer except for one question so that is irritated us lah. Why like so, that? No, sometimes you have a developer, right? Or, or mm. a consultant doing for you. Mm. Like for in order for you to get a different set of questions, you need mm -hmm. to re-engage back the new or the same consultant to develop a set of new questions for you or set of new e-learning for you. <sighs> oh. Uh, so, or otherwise, some department they just uh, build their own e-learning question oh. and they, they just put it there. Lah. It depends on the department that uh, supposed to come up with the e-learning content. Mm. It's either you proactive or you just remain the same. Or... The remain the same. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's a good in thing. A, mm. Even in an education, we can remain the question uh, for five years, you know. Uh, yeah, it's just to cover the one who just joined or the new ones, right? Mm. So, yeah, like that. Lah. It must be back. Um, okay, thank you for sharing. Any others who like to share? Like okay, to share? Yeah, Professor, may I know that is that claim system also under this uh, uh, the system? It's yes. also and because yes. uh, my company we all have problem with the claim system because every department mm. it, it's decentralized, right? So like mm. the claim system, every time when we want to claim something or when we want to enter something. Mm -hmm. It's every time will be like arrow, arrow, and the claim we only can be claimed like two months. So for the two months, the IT will say it's in maintenance. Then after the third month, if mm. we cannot claim, mm. the claim will be, you know, uh will be like uh or I uh, cannot pack already. Oh, so they yeah, were sending us a manual form which is very thick for you to write and do. So it's like it's like quite uh it's like quite uh not friendly use. Uh, uh, depends to the company also. Some companies, they included the claim into the uh, work system. But some company, they don't want. They will separately leave it to HR to uh, you know, deal this claim. Uh, example that I can say, uh, like Uniraza, for the research track lecturers, uh, those who are doing uh, publications, everything, we have an incentive. So to claiming that incentive, we need to send separately to the respective person. Manually, we will send. Uh, fill up the form and manually, we will send to the person by email. After that, it will be processed. For claiming, uh, like uh, example, if you are bought laptop or something, you want to claim that money means uh, you have to put it inside the system. Because system, sometimes they will show the errors, everything. This one is not because of the human error. It's a uh, technical problem. So they don't have to monitor by the person in charge. So we Doctor, can't do that part. Doctor, in my yeah. organization, yeah. we are using this flow, um, as you mentioned just now, for claims, uh -huh. for rate of payment, for finance part. It's all in one system. But it's not really HR. But it's the management on the finance part. Yes. That's why I say different, different organizations have different way to and they will see how the organizations are dealing, you know, because some of the claim cannot be handled in the system itself because it's cost like they have to do the checking of the documentation, everything. So that's why it will be manually handled. Like my case, uh, I have to claim my incentive for publications manually. I have to send all the documentations together with the form, together with the proof, everything in an email. Then my dean will check, sign, send to the uh, HR. HR will decide it. 
whether uh, true or not, everything, they will investigate and ask questions from the dean. Then only it goes to VC signature. So once VC sign, <coughs> it will go to the finance department to proceed the finance money for the payment will include in our salary. Something like that. Not something true. It's like that. So it depends how the company is doing their claiming process. Some of them, you have to include everything in the system. Some of them, you, you have to include certain claims only in the system, not others. I like that. Okay. Any any other comments? Doctor, so that uh, I try to understand uh, what we are learning. So it's mean that all the department, the system in all the department do, uh, if we are using the same system to key in every, all the department key in the, in the same system, in, it's called the, what we are studying now, is it? Cost what actually? What do you mean by cost? You mean uh, it's error not cost. I mean what? like I mean like if like uh in the bank mm -hmm. we all have the one system which is for apply leave or claim or uh -huh. uh, any performance. So we all have common one system regardless any department. So that is what we are studying now. So that it's called the system. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, so um, the next point will be HR strategy alignments, okay? So all these will be implemented in your organization as a HR strategy. So HR should be focused more toward these components to ensure that individual, as a employees, you need to perform well. As the organizations, they also need to perform in terms of achieving their goals, vision, and mission. So these are the strategy alignments. First of all, they focus into training and development, which is very important. All the companies sure have this training and development because they want the employees increase their professional skills. Okay, there is a pre, there is a pre and post training. If they want to see before and after the training, whether got any improvements or not. Okay, then only they can make a decisions whether this employee is fit for the organization or not. That's why they have this. Okay, the talent management, uh, which is related to it, the recruitment selections uh, and talent acquisitions. Okay, so they want to identify the employees fit for the organization, this department will play a major role. Okay, the next point will be employee safety and security. Of course, HR have to look into the employee welfare. Okay, employee welfare to make sure that employee feels safe and secure when they are working in the organization. So in this part, they have uh, covered in terms of insurance act, Okay, Malaysian uh, labor law, all that is under employee safety and security. So the main points that you can learn is Malaysian employment law. The reason is anything that happened in the organization, you feel that insecure toward uh, each other, then Malaysian employment law is one of the uh, labor law can help employee to be secure. Doesn't matter your salary matter, your promotions increment or whatever issues that having in your organization, you can refer to it the labor law. So the last point will be employee retentions and engagement. So this is the main part HR will look into because employee need to be retained in the organization. Not all the organization employees is turnover will be high. If turnover will be high in certain organization, it means there is some issues is happening until employees are not able to work and engage with all the activities done by HR. So HR will be focused toward this also. They will not simply firing employees from the 
organization must have your any problems which is cost them to make a decision so that's why hr is not the uh, people who are firing employees they are there to help the employee to retain and solve their problem okay you need to understand that so jangan bergaduh dengan hr eh apa apa pun ya ah cakap macam tu je kadang-kadang bergaduh juga ah kadang-kadang ni malas semua orang bergaduh Terus. sampai <laughs> sampai tak boleh tahan cara dia orang buat pun ah. adalah orang cakap dia cakap satu <laughs> kita ada isu yang betul-betul boleh argue boleh dapatkan dia punya ni dia pula cakap benda lain dia juga so what to do uh, be patient If saling menerima to, lah ah uh, if you want to stay longer <laughs> in the organization then you need to take it but sabar tu biarlah ber, berpatutan takkanlah you nak sabar sampai i know benda tu tak boleh ni take it so decision on your hand but hr will not make a decisions for you to fire okay they want to retain the employee and engage with all the organization's goals vision and mission to achieve together but that's the reason so performance management uh, especially for the employee appraisal uh, your kpi so you need to achieve your kpi so the performance management will uh, play a role for you to identify who's the person achieving their kpi then the last point employee compensation and benefit this is the main hr will look into all the organization employee compensation and benefit so when you talk about compensation compensations will be positive pay and negative pay this one i will talk in unit 8 compensations so you will be able to understand how the compensations look like because everyone see compensations is like a negative view no compensations also got positive view okay doesn't matter compensations like uh, hiring you for uh, one day after that terminated you in a 24 hours they give you compensation that is negative compensations okay they pay you com uh, compensations due to uh, wrongly making a decision take you okay that is different way we will see later you need eight week seven uh, week six Uh, week 5 so this is the examples of article you can copy the sentences you can copy google it and find the article and read what is a high performance work system you will be able to understand more better how it's work so i'm give you samples of high performance work system articles so all these are articles okay that's all i done unit 5 for unit 6 human resource planning and recruitment you can have a, a video recording to learn better about the unit 6 okay now i stop my presentation here let group to do the discussion that is very important okay start group 9 Group nine, the tido ke? Apa jadi? Ada semangat dah week tiga ni, ha? Semua dah ada semangat ni. Come on, come on, cayo guys. Hello group, what happened? Ah, semua diam saja. Should we proceed with group 10 first? Yes, can. No problem. Anyone can proceed. Today I'm leaving to you all. How many groups you all want to present also can. Because I'm earlier started. We still have time to go. Let's go group 10. Uh, kejap eh. Uh, uh, tolong eh audience audience sila get ready with your a question for the group okay jangan cakap good, good you still have 
questions to ask them to get more information. <clears throat> Doctor, can I ask you a question? Yes, can. Proceed. For the, for the previous group, the one who already presented, mm -hmm. we upload the, our slide in discussion part, right? In your yes. Page. A discussion means not in the discussion. You should upload in the online discussion uh, in a Eurox itself. Right. So there are segments, they call it the discussion. This is where we uh, upload our file. Uh, don't, don't upload in the discussion, you know, the discussion uh, column. No, you have to upload in the Eurox itself because I, I need to give marks. So the marks only can give it in the Eurox itself which okay. is indicate your name. All of you have a name, right? So yes. I will mark that. So individuals upload or we need... In individual, to... uh, I mean the leader upload is enough. I can look at who is the person from the slide itself. Uh, okay, let me try again. Thanks. Okay. Okay, you can start. Group that ready? Ready. Okay. Nama saya sudah salah. How huh? many S dekat situ? Oh, oh, oh. sorry. I, sorry. Only I took one S. I took out sekarang. I took out sekarang. Nama. Boleh salah. Nanti. No. Nervous, nervous, nervous. Nervous, nervous doktor. Uh, <laughs> tadi, tadi. I'm okay saja. Still boleh rename boleh. as a lotion ni. Nama saya. Yeah. So... Uh, no actually, my friend Mukmin, ah uh, Mukmin, you ma kenal Mukmin kan, doktor? Kenal, kenal. Ah, uh, dia kata panggil doktor Hema. Is it correct? Ah, uh, okay. Tak ada. Just ah uh, nama doktor oh, Hema sudah macam. Clarify macam... lah, clarify. Ah, ya, 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 ya. Tak ada. Okay. Sebenarnya saya memang huh? tak ada doktor. You ni kan? Saya pun tak tahu lah. <laughs> you all pun tanya. I, I punya kelas yang face to face pun, yang budak budak Chinese. Yang just joining first semester, biar orang tak tahu lah fikir apa. Tengok saya saja. Uh, boleh saya kita orang panggil nama kamu. Nana istanya yang saya duduk ke depan ni yang tak ada berpangkat lah ni. Saya tanya mana dia dia orang. Dia kata tak nampak macam doktor. Dan nampak macam mana? Macam budak kecil. Muda doktor, muda. Ayo, semua macam tu tau. Yang datang kelas saya semua. I pun stress dengan diorang dah cakap apa. Saya dengan tak doktor. Tak It was the secret eh, doktor? What is the secret to look young? Yes, but uh, because I'm not married yet. So, of course, I'm looking uh, very young. Uh, so you like the lunch, doktor? Cik! <laughs> Yang dah kahwin, kahwin semua dah tu. Nampak tua dah. <laughs> Ada dua anak lagi lah nampak tua lagi. <laughs> Okay, can, can, can we start, Doctor? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, good afternoon to Dr. Hema and to all my friends. And this, uh, we are from group 10. Uh, so if you can see from the slide, this is our group members. And please be informed that Wan Jiahua just joined our group last uh, yesterday. So she, she, yeah, she will not be able to uh, join our presentation because of uh, i think because of the work commitment i think she already uh, pm you doctor so uh, without any further ado uh, we will start our presentation so, uh, with... yeah. those uh, those who are not presenting never mind let them to do in the case study okay sekarang yeah, yeah. kamu lima orang dah buat make sure yang lima lagi satu buat untuk case study yeah five of us we present and five of us will uh will uh, join the q and a if any ada ada if we uh, ada Q&A lah okay okay uh for for today's slide we will present about human resource management management of tesla so for first slide uh we'll uh invite my friend to give an introduction about tesla please proceed thank you daniel hanish here i will be presenting the introduction and the conclusion okay uh fun fact uh tesla American company that it was uh, founded in 2003 and Elon Musk actually was not one of the original founders. He only invested in 2004 
for only 6.5 million which is dropped in the ocean compared to the tesla market cap today but with that 6.5 million he managed to become the biggest shareholder in tesla and also get his name included as the founder after the fact basically <laughs> all right uh, tesla uh, he, vision is uh, to create the most compelling car company by leading the world's transition to electric vehicles and its mission is to bring uh, mass market electric cars to the market in every price bracket for now they are still in the higher price bracket but they are working to bring uh, the electric vehicles to almost every price bracket out there is the current ceo is also elon musk and what it means by transform is investment from liability is that uh, Tesla invested early in the automation, the autopilot, and also into the battery technologies, which, which, which does took a lot of capital in the beginning. But at the end, uh, as we see today, uh, the demand for this bat external battery technologies and the automation is now through the roof. So they are basically very, very well ahead of the curve. So this is attributed to Tesla Human Resource uh, Department, which is very intense culture, pro provide uh, prioritize productivity above all else, and uh, really reward innovation in the in the workplace. So for the next uh, section, which is the internet external challenges, I will head, I will hand back the presentation to Mr. Daniel. Okay, thank you, Anif. For okay. for next slide, for this slide, I will spend on the internet challenges that Tesla facing. And the current internet internet challenges that uh Tesla facing is right now is the anti-union efforts. In September 2019, Tesla and Elon Musk had illegally sabotaged employee efforts to form a union. Union organizers voiced concern about high injury rates and low wages. Organizers were illegally harassed by Tesla security guards, threatened with losing benefit. In 20, June 2022, Tesla paid Mike Worldwide to monitor a Tesla employee Facebook group and to conduct research on Tesla Union organizer. The point number two is racism and harassment. Tesla has, has faced numerous complaints of workplace harassment and racial discrimination. A former black worker described the work environment at Tesla Buffalo plants as a very racist place. Approximately 100 former employees have submitted signed statements alleging that Tesla discriminates specifically against African American and allows racist environment in its factory. On sexual harassment, in 2021, seven women came forward with claims of having faced sexual harassment. The woman was consistently subjected to catcalling, unwanted advances, unwanted touching and discrimination while at work. On turnover rate, Tesla has been criticized for it, for its high level of executive turnover compared to, to other technology companies. For future challenges, the localization, okay? The consequences in is a growing trend towards localization in which car manufacturers increase their local production, expand a local supplier cluster, and reduce dependent on foreign uh, com component. For bureaucracy, uh, with rapid growth in sales volume, Tesla must avoid becoming like other companies in the industry. This means not getting bogged down in internal bureaucracy re regarding its daily operation and decision making. For culture environment, Tesla Human Resource Department has a direct impact on the work environment. Employees rate their environment a C plus at Tesla. Okay, for the next slide, I will continue also for the next slide on the uh external challenges. For external challenges, we have uh the current situation for external challenges is the China US trade war. Being a US based company, one of the key political factors that impact the operation of Tesla in the Chinese-US trade war. On the rising material costs, Tesla faced a several material shortage due to a supply chain disruption during the COVID-19 pandemic. On the US uh, D value, the USD value has const constantly increased and affects the import-export trade dynamics for the country within and in the US. And then it's expensive for the most. Electric vehicles have higher costs compared to conventional vehicles to expensive battery packs. And the last one for current is the, the avail availability and accessibility of charging infrastructure, infrastructure are critical when purchasing an electric electrical vehicle. For future challenges, 
we have a uh, high competition. The new entry of new competitors into EV market could cause price com competition that will affect Tesla revenue growth and profit margin. Under China exposure, Tesla back up ready in China now. The competition mm -hmm. from Chinese colonizer, which have strong government to support on the China product. Of course, the last one is the squeeze, squeeze supply chain. Rising demand for electric vehicle, Tesla may be facing squeeze supply chains and also push price prices of raw material to multi year high. For next slide, I will pass to my friend to continue. Thank you. Uh, siapa ni lepas ni? Uh, Bakis. Ah, Bakis. Silakan Bakis. Can you uh, hear my voice? Dengar, dengar. Sedap, sedap. Teruskan. Boleh? Boleh dengar? Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so for the Kiki uh, HR function that will impacted by these challenges, so for anti-union sentiment, actually can lead to in the increased conflict in the workforce. So the case actually has a negative impact and view on the Tesla company and also Elon Musk. Uh, for this perspective, we can see this can be seen in the lack of leadership uh, development resulting in employer uh, employee conflicts. So workplace disputes, unhealthy work environments and also employees leaving due to a lack of correlation with their managers. Uh, it also creates a constant concern of uh, for HR professionals. Uh, in employee engagement because keeping employee engaged is a uh, critical to a business success. So negative sentiment uh, towards uh, unions can impact to overall employee engagement and also indirectly into the contribute to the higher uh, turnover rates. So for the external, uh, company like Tesla may face challenges in attracting and retaining talent, especially in the lack of charging in, uh, infrastructure is seen as a significant barrier by uh, potential employees. Uh, and next, for the, as the COVID-19 epidemic presents in the new obstacles, a company may uh, find itself facing far-reaching effects from growing material costs and supply chain interruptions. So the materials uh, shortage and supply chain disruptions can cause uh, changes in the production uh, schedules and also uh, overall business strategy. So for the future, I will pass to my friend. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, hello. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, can. Uh, considering the aforementioned internal difficulties, I will be explaining about... Uh, sorry, previous slide. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, I'll be explaining about two HR functions that will be impacted by those challenges. The first challenge is in the internal... Um, is localization. Uh, the HR function that will be impacted is uh, recruitment and talent acquisition. HR need to revise employee assessment criteria and performance measure in order to guarantee compliance with the new rule and local market needs. On uh, bureaucracy, slower decision make making within the HR department will be impacted uh, because bureaucracy will often bring more paperwork and requirement and uh, those HR professionals will be spending more time on administrative duties like filing forms, getting approval and etc. rather than focusing on strategy HR initiative. <laughs> on the external, uh, high competition impact will be uh, impacting uh, HR function, agility and adaptability function. Uh, they need to be able to uh, be flexible, quick to adjust in a competitive market, industry trend and evolving workforce <coughs> expectation by adjusting HR policies, practice and strategies accordingly. And lastly, uh, skill supply management change will be impacting talent management challenges because HR need to be flexible and quick to adjust in competitive market, industry trend and evolving workplace uh, and they need to be able to appropriately balance stuff in levels. Okay, I will pass to my friend. Okay, Alright, can anybody hear me? Alright, for HR recommendation, we will only address only a few uh, the most important part. Uh, for inter internal challenges, HR recommendation is Tesla should allow its employee to form a union. 
because through the union, it covers most of the issues related to the employees, where all these employees will have the ability to voice up their concern on current issues such as sexual harassment, racism, and any work-related issues like what uh, my colleague already presented previously. Kan? For external challenges, which is current, the affordable materials, Tesla should, uh, as always, to reduce the cost of its cars, such as using more affordable materials or developing more efficient production processes. And for infrastructure, they should work with government or other stakeholders to develop and expand the network of public charging stations because this one is the um, most highlighted issue with Tesla. And then for uh, manufacturing, uh, Tesla should also consider expanding its manufacturing capacity by building new manufacturing sites in strategic location around the world, which uh, we believe Tesla already start to address this, this part, this recommendation. And then uh, for external challenges, which is the innovation or the competition, uh, Tesla should continue to innovate and develop new products and services in order to stay ahead of the competition. They should uh, create more positive and productive work environment, improve its reputation and continue to be the leader in the EV industry, which their competition now is uh, with China. All right, um, I think that's all from my part. So for the next part, uh, I pass it to my partner. Uh, hello, okay. Uh, the next is uh, relevant theories, concept and models. So uh, in previous uh, slide, uh, kita tahu ada two uh, internal uh, challenges lah, which is uh, you, apa tu? A union uh, and high turnover rate. So, untuk uh, factor contributing to uh, form to formation union ni uh, sebabnya high injury rates and low wages. So, uh, teori yang uh, ke, uh, kena lah dengan ni is training effectiveness index and training efficiency. Sorry. Ha, okay. Metric. Uh, uh, di mana dengan uh, bagi training yang lebih kepada staff and it can uh, help reducing the injury rates while available uh, hour for every employment lah, uh, employee lah lepas tu uh, uh, untuk high turnover pula uh, kita guna the three hours three three hours of employee retention respect recognition uh, and rewards so uh, bila uh, Three R concept ni untuk retain employees from leaving uh, the company lah. So the three R is focus on reward, recognition, respect. Bila reduce turnover, kita boleh increase the productivity, reduce absenteeism and more pleasant work environment. And it also akan improve profit lah. And then the three R will also create a heart to leave workplace, having more to offer employee than other employers. Nah, okay. Thank you. Okay, to conclude, uh, Tesla is a giant in this industry right now. So, the bigger you are, the harder for, for you to pivot and change direction. So, the set of challenges that we face is uh, the whole set of internet excellence challenges, which is really requiring uh, strategic attention and proactive human resource interventions. The major, major issues like anti-union efforts and is Turnover rates also uh, give some challenge to HR in fostering inclusivity and positive work culture. As, as, as it stands, uh, the work culture is uh, very tough at Tesla currently. And they also need uh, forward-thinking strategies, uh, pro must be proactive in addressing uh, future challenges. And also they have to do uh, more elaborate cost-cutting due to the uh, massive competition from China. So uh, in conclusion, uh, they should uh, stay ahead by be able to innovate and embracing uh, better HR metrics that will create, uh, create a more resilient organization. Thank you from Group 10. Okay, that's all from Group 10. Thank you. Oh, terbaiklah, Abang Tesla. Selamat. 
Okay, any question? I have a question. <laughs> yes, proceed. I'm, I'm very curious about the sexual harassment complaint in Tesla. Okay. So during this research for Tesla presentation, this is any recommendation by HR suggest to give a solution on the sexual harassment in the office. Thanks. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for your question. Okay, we put that under all under union. Um, uh, the, too, we propose a union for Tesla. So those uh, issues related to uh, sexual harassment, you know, related to high rate of turnover, will be kept under union. So that's why we propose union. So uh, hope it answer your question. Uh, okay, thanks. I have a question. Uh, can you let me know uh, what kind of HR metric you are using? Hello? Suruh saja tak ada jawapan. Tak ada, tak ada fikir. Tak ada. No, no, no. My, my answer will, will, will ask your question, doctor. Sekejap, eh? Kena buka buku sekejap. Boleh. Buka buku, kena tahu HR metri apa dia orang guna. Maknanya dalam buku ada. Itu just, just, just cakap je buka buku. Diorang dah ada dalam kelotak tu. Sub oh. Ha, ada dia. CPU tengah proses. Okay, okay. Ha. Eh, sampai jawab je. Doctor, your question just now, HR metric, it is for specific or in general? Specific. They are using the company. Okay. Lamanya, kan I cakap, saya akan relate dengan subject lepas-lepas yang you all belajar. Di grup lain tengah cari. Kalau oh, ikutkan dekat sini I think the most important is the employee happiness metric lah sebab dia punya main issue dia mostly sebab Tesla punya reluctant to allow union to, to form and also uh, all, all these sexual harassment issues so employee happiness is the one thing that they really need to look apa at, tak dengar apa themselves lah employee happiness lah. employee happiness mm -mm. Betul ke digunakan employee happiness? What, what Apa? Is, promotion? Atau untuk sexual harassment? What what they should focus on lah actually. Because... Betul ke? Uh, Ani? Atau you kelentong? This is my opinion lah. Based kepada <laughs> issues yang dia yang dia face sekarang tu kan. So maksudnya tak betul lah. You didn't know what what kind of HR metric they are using. Okay, anyway. Uh, go and find out this matter. What kind of HR metric they are using? Sure, we'll do, doctor. Thank you, thank you. Okay, next group. Um, doctor, I'll be actually presenting. Yes, group, group nine. Where, uh, where is group nine? Yeah, yeah I'm here. Uh, okay, start group nine. Let me just share my screen. Thank you. 
Uh, can somebody from group nine share the uh, presentation, please? I can't do it. I'm not sure why. Your team member is here for group nine. Yeah, uh, anyone can help me out, please. Bro, I use my phone right now. So how to to to? Yeah, my laptop is not even working from just now. <laughs> oh damn! All the function is actually freeze. I'm also using my tab. Should we go to group eleven first? Uh okay. Just maybe go for it first. Let me figure it out. So, group 11, you want to start? Before 11, group 11 start, so, doctor, the, the metrics that you said just now, based on our previous lesson, real class, we have 11 HR metric scan. Too general. Too general. Mm -hmm. So you might you check out that you want to the Tesla must be have a specific HR yes. metrics uh, to counter of course, the challenges. Yeah, takkan guna general untuk eleven eleven. Sure, yeah. dia ada specific dia sendiri. Yes. Atau dia akan rename dia punya HR mm. metric dia sendiri. So on dia dia orang punya company problem lah kan? Hmm. Alright. Uh, sexual harassment mesti dia ada some uh, HR metric untuk dia nak ni. problem lah. Uh, to rectify uh, the problem. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm asking you because uh, sementara group 11 nak start kan, kita boleh borak-borak dulu doktor. So, oh, kan. suka sangat lah nak borak. I, I don't think uh, Tesla akan disclose dia punya internal apa uh, metric, key metrics untuk, untuk public view kot. But kita boleh uh, see lah. Can you Google and find out whether ada ke tak? Tengok dulu Google and find out. After that, you sebagai seorang students, then you can straight away call the HR people to to rectify. Just tanya je. Call dia orang, tanya. Apa HR metric yang you all guna? Saya student. Uh, saya nak tahu. Kalau dia tanya, you bagi je. Uh, photocopy you punya Uni Raza ID. Uh, dia dia percayalah uni student boleh ya buat investigation <laughs> buat research tak salah tak uh, buat kata je lah ini assignment kami one of the assignment so we wanted to know the exactly uh, kalau general i pun boleh cakap attendance punya HR metric lah ni lah tu lah ha, apa specific ha, tanya kat dia orang si dia jawab uh, Good Hello. heaven, if you're ready, just sh yes. share the screen uh, and then we'll stop we are, Yeah, we are ready. Okay, then share. Sheila, are you there? All right. Hi, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to everyone. We are from group 11. Um, okay, our team have decided to do uh, Shopee uh, as uh, the retail uh, company that we should cover on the HR uh, strategic uh, topic. <clears throat> so uh, today... Uh, let's uh, look into uh, our, uh, this is actually the, the this, uh, hang on ya. Eh. Shopee is a global e-commerce giant and uh, Shopee's success isn't uh, just about the technology but it's also about the incredible people. Uh, can someone move to the uh, first slide please? Sorry. Sheila, next slide please. Okay. Okay, introduction, David. 
So Shopee isn't just a, Shopee's success it just, isn't just about the technology, it's about the incredible people. Special role in steering Shopee's operation and ensuring excellence. Uh, and next we will explore uh, more about Shopee business model. Uh, where we will be uh, diving into vital role of human resources and wrap up our key insights. Uh, so let's start. Uh, I will be presenting for the um, external challenges. Uh, Sheila, okay. So um, let's look at the external challenges yeah? uh, that Shopee navigates in its dynamic landscape. Uh, firstly, the competitive market expert immersed pressure in a constantly evolving e-commerce sphere, staying ahead in both a challenge and a necessity. And then uh, the ever-evolving uh, ever customer expectation and add another layer of uh, complexi complexity. Uh, Shopee is this dedicated to uh, meeting and exceeding these expectations but the journey is uh, marked by continuous adaption. Uh, lastly, uh, the regulatory compliance uh, complexities pose a challenge. Uh, where, uh, operating globally means uh, adhering to diverse regulation, requiring Shopee to stay agile and compliant across jurisdiction. Uh, now I'm gonna pass the slide. I mean, the pass the presentation to uh, next next person. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Isa. We proceed with uh, internal challenges. There are three components. The first one is scaling operation workforce. Um, for seasonal fluctuations, e-commerce platforms often experience seasonal peaks, such as during holidays or special promotions, leading to a surge in demand. Just the workforce to meet these spikes while avoiding overstaffing during slower periods can be a delicate balance. Um, skill diversity and cross-training. This part is very crucial to ensure a diverse set of skills and cross-training employees for flexibility in different roles. Second, talent management. Um, attracting top talent. HR needs to develop strategies to showcase Shopee as an attractive employee, offering not only competitive salaries, but also career growth opportunities, a positive work culture, and other benefits. For employee retention, retaining high-performing employees is essential for long-term success. HR needs to identify factors uh, that contribute to employee satisfactions, address any concerns, and implement retention strategies um, such as career development programs, mentorship initiative, and competitive compensation packages. For the third company is employee engagement. High, high workload and stress. In a fast-paced e-commerce environment, employees might experience high workload, high workloads and stress leading to burnout and this uh, decreased engagement. Uh, from my experience, uh, for customer service in Shopee, they have to multitask. Like if they, uh, they, if they attend customer through calls, they also need to do chat and also replying emails. Last, uh, lastly, remote work. We believe Shopee has remote or hybrid work models, maintaining a sense of connection and engagement among remote employees can be challenging. All right, I pass to the next presenter. Hey, thank you, uh, Munira. So next, I'm going to present on the uh, recruitment and selection. Yeah. So uh, with the increasing competition in the e-commerce industry, attracting and selecting the right talent has become crucial for Shopee's success. The ability to identify a pool of individuals with relevant skills uh, and also have to make sure that they are cultural fit and also drive for innovation is essential. Effective recruitment and selection process is important to ensure that Shopee hires employees not only can contribute to the company's current growth, but also to adapt to the changing market dynamics and also provide excellent customer service. The HR manager has to understand clearly each role and responsibility of the talent so that a clear and precise job description and attractive remuneration package can be drafted out. 
Strategic HR streamlined the recruitment and selection process, leveraging technology and data analytics to identify and attract top talent swiftly. This efficiency is crucial in a fast-paced organization like Shopee, when time is of the essence in acquiring the right talent to meet the immediate demands. So next, so I, next I will move my friend. My friend next is learning and development. At Shopee, continuous learning is not optional, but it is a necessity. In order to stay ahead of customer expectation and technology investment, Shopee recognized the critical importance of continuous learning and the development for their employees. So this means investing in upskilling and reskilling effort to enhance capabilities and adaptability. By doing so, Shopee ensures its workforce is equipped with the skills needed to navigate the dynamic e-commerce landscape, drive innovation, and also to deliver outstanding customer experience. Next, I will pass to the next presenter. Okay, hi. I will be presenting about the recruitment and selection strategies. There are two main factors which is this trust, uh, these strategies are crucial components of the human resources management process. The first strategy is to develop a strong employer brand to make the organization an attractive place to work. And then the second strategy is to lead into making more informed decision making, improve efficiency and better outcomes. So I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. Um, hi. Uh... So my site is a learning and development strategy. So based on the point that have been listed in scale, in slide, learning and development strategy in Shopee is like a uh, give comprehensive training program to our staff, uh, covering technical skills uh, and soft skill. For technical skill is include uh, e-commerce platform and soft skill for uh, include problem solving to address customer needs. In addition, for string a uh, culture of knowledge, uh, sharing and collaboration among employees can be achieved uh, through regular form, digital platforms and monitoring program, encouraging continuous learning and professional growth. So one of the example is uh, Shopee Sailor Circle. Uh, it's for sailor on the Shopee platform to interact, uh, exchange idea and give feedback. Uh, so I give a uh, next slide to my team members, Fazilawati. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. I am Fazilawati Zuhidin. Today I'll presenting on enhancing Shopee HR strategy uh, through relevant theories, concepts, and models. This brief overview will highlight key approach to optimize uh, Shopee HR practice. Uh, it is crucial focus on building a strong emplo employer brand guided by the principles of employer branding theory. This involves highlighting Shopee's positive work culture and notable achievements. And then Shopee can achieve this through sharing employee testimonials, regular updates, on social media and active participation in industry events. Additionally, integrating talent analytics into Shopee strategy will allow for data-driven decision-making. This approach will uh, enable them to effectively track employee turnover and refine their recruitment metric. By doing so, Shopee aligned with key human resources management and organizational behavior, theory there, uh, thereby optimizing uh, Shopee HR processes and attracting the best talent in the market. Now I'll pass uh, this over to Afika uh, to continue. Okay, thank you, Sheila. I will share regarding theories that Shopee apply for learning and development strategies. For Shopee HR strategies, it focus on a robust learning and development program based on adult learning theory. Shopee offer comprehensive training in technical e-commerce platform skill and also soft skill which is customer centric problem solving foster a culture of knowledge sharing through social learning theory it also utilize forum digital platform and also mentoring program platform like shopee seller circle embody the community of practice model encouraging collaborative learning and also community building with, within the organizations Next, I uh, I 
give to another presenter. Next presenter. Thank you. Thank you, Atika. Okay, in summary, why Shopee become successful due to firstly the use of technology to adapt to the ever-changing e-commerce landscape. Secondly, overcoming external challenges by focusing on the scaling, talent management, and continuous learning. It is important to implement this recommendation to address challenges and align HR organizational objective. Okay, thank you everyone for your time and attention during this presentation. We open to any question or feedback you may have. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Any question? Any question? No. Okay, group nine, please. You can make it your presentation. Okay, anyone would like to do today presentation, those who are next week students, uh, I mean next week group, you wanted to do today also can. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, group 16 will be presenting today, Doctor. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, Doctor. Group 12 is ready also. We just wait for the turn actually. Okay. Uh, I'm okay if you want to present uh, today also can. If you want to present next week also can. Yeah, okay, I... so group nine, you can. Group 12. Uh, uh, thank you so much for everyone. Okay, uh, so sorry, there's actually a little bit of hiccups here and there. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to actually present it. Yeah, my name is Kali and I'm actually from group nine. Okay, we'll be actually presenting about the strategic human resource management on the Food Panda company. All right. So uh, basically, uh, this uh, company has been actually available uh, since uh, 2012. That is actually, if it comes under uh, 2023 March, uh, 2024 March, that's going to be about 12 years. Uh, Food Panda has been actually available in uh, Malaysia itself. All right. And uh, also, it actually operates in 10 countries. Okay, Liana, uh, change to the, yep, yep. Thank you. Uh, it's actually um, available in uh, 10 countries. Okay, and not just the delivery, uh, Food Panda also has Cloud Kitchen and also Cloud Store. All right. So it's actually a very big business in Malaysia and actually uh, generates a very big uh, revenue also in Malaysia. All right. Uh, next. All right. Uh, uh, so sorry that uh, we are we are supposed to actually talk about the external, internal and also the future. I'll be talking about it. Uh, the point here is where we are missing of the whole slide. I'm not sure why what happened. But I will actually talk about it. Okay. Uh, in terms of external uh, problems that we're actually having uh, in terms of uh, H, uh, food, food Panda, okay, uh, there's a lot of uh, competition that is already going on with Food Panda as of now. Uh, used to be they were actually uh, the leader of the market, uh, still are, okay, but the point here is the moment when Grab and other companies have actually uh, started to employ the same delivery methods, okay, it actually, actually became a challenge for Food Panda. Internally, the point where the issue actually comes about is when the um uh, food riders okay uh was actually going through a lot of issues okay where they're actually getting into a lot of accidents and also they're actually not well prepared they are not trained a lot of people who does not uh even equip with the health uh, safety okay are actually driving uh, uh riding the motorbikes so with that okay internally there's actually a lot of issues comes by where uh food panda refuse to actually take any type of uh, responsibility when it comes to uh, food panda riders actually getting in accidents okay so that that actually enrages a lot of people a lot of families okay and even uh, throughout the customers i think the feedback came in where you should be actually able to cater to the food panda riders rather than uh, ignoring them completely because they are working for your company and uh, for future uh, since there's a lot of competition that is already going on okay every company that is actually being a competitor with uh, food panda is actually deploying different strategies in order for them to actually gain more customers trying to actually divide the niche of the customer that we're actually looking at right now so some of the areas where a certain areas has already been conquered by some uh, groups and grab is also growing uh, exponentially uh, just being a competitor directly with food panda so because of this major issues okay food panda have to actually take uh, this as a challenge okay because uh, if they are actually not the leader or they're actually losing the position of the leader and i believe that that is actually not going to be a good one because any company who is refusing to change according to the timeline will actually perish eventually so that those are the three major uh, challenges that we're actually talking about right now all right. So uh, with that challenges, okay, uh, the key function, HR key functions that we're actually going to talk about is the two key functions, which is the remuneration and also the health and safety. 
when it comes to remuneration, okay, uh, Food Panda used to actually take a higher cut, okay, in terms of the in uh, in terms of the pay. Uh, every delivery that is actually being made, okay, the delivery that uh will be actually divided into uh the Food Panda riders uh, uh part and also the company part. So they were actually taking more of a cut, okay, and then less of a cut to the riders. But I think very recently they have actually did some research, okay. They know that Food Panda riders were actually leaving directly from uh, Food Panda to Grab, or they're actually doing both. So with that, the their uh, status quo is actually being challenged, and they actually revised again to actually cater to more riders. They actually uh, they have actually come up with the um uh. Uh, a code uh, a code system okay where uh, uh first tier you will be actually getting a different uh, pr uh different uh, cut uh, second tier you'll be actually get, getting a different cut third tier you'll be actually getting a different cut so which means it also promotes the vendor to actually do more deliveries and uh, do not waste their time uh, even further so that that's one thing uh so in terms of safety uh in terms of safety, they are actually doing this okay where they actually uh, give um, raincoats uh, safety gears to the vendors. Uh, so sorry to the food panda riders that is one thing they have actually done it and also uh, i think uh, two years one to two years back would while the covid was actually going right a uh, while they were also actually introduced with the insurance so right now every rider that is actually uh, being registered under uh, food panda or are also given in uh, insurance so if you are having any issues or you actually met in an accident you will be actually given uh, proper health and also safety so uh, both has been actually covered and in terms of HR key functions. Uh, next, Liana. All right. Uh, so uh, with that, we are also having some kind of a recommendation. Okay. These are recommendations that uh, already internally the Food Panda is actually doing it. One is actually to provide training and development. Uh, a lot of uh, riders that is actually not following the uh, proper uh, training and also they're actually not uh, following the rules of the road, okay, will be actually given proper trainings and also if uh, a certain level of uh, um, oh, uh, they're actually not following the rules, okay, they'll be actually taken away the license, one, and also they'll be actually losing the job eventually. So this uh, uh, training is actually very much important because it actually uh, comes down to the cross-cultural, okay, the riders from different countries will be actually flown to here, they'll be actually sharing their information as well. Okay, an effective employment engagement program. Uh, this uh, is a very recent program that was actually been engaged by Food Panda, where they have actually even uh, convinced some of the riders to actually take up um, the studies. Okay, uh, Mila is one of the universities who is actually uh, engaging directly with uh, Food Panda to actually take uh, uh, some of them taking uh, some courses. Okay, and also uh, I think they're actually going for diploma uh, courses as well. And uh, for future, okay, any, uh, if you can actually see, uh, there's a lot of updates as actually, I mean, if you're a user of Food Panda, okay, you can actually see the updates of uh, Food Panda is actually much more higher compared to used to be. Uh, right now, they're actually trying to actually come up with different type of uh, ideas, how to actually uh, lock the customers, okay, like uh, by giving them loyalty programs, by giving them actually uh, coupons on a certain level. So that actually happens, okay, and these are the recommendation that has already been implemented uh, inside uh, Food Panda right now. Uh, next. All right, so uh, those uh, uh, recommendations that is already done actually based on the relevant theories and concepts and models. So these two models and the concepts that we have actually taken is one is the balance scorecard, okay, where they actually come up with a tier. The tier was actually referred to the balance scorecard, like how uh, a management employee or an employee that is actually sitting inside the office is getting a tier level review and also year end review. The same things, but the point here is they actually contractual uh, riders. So with that being said, okay giving tiers will actually uh, keep the loyalty and also make sure that the work is actually done without having any type of issues in between so uh, this was actually based on the balance scorecard uh, style okay and also the cultural awareness is actually um they actually adapting towards other other uh, countries and also other companies okay where they're actually talking in between teams so when they're actually talking in between teams uh, from the management side, not and also to the uh, rider side, okay, they're actually having uh, a very good communication. And also if there's actually any complaints raised directly from the rider or from the management is actually being taken seriously. So this is actually uh, one of the ways they actually uh, um, promoting the cultural awareness, okay, and also the sensibility at the point of time, okay. And uh, yep, next. 
And uh, with that, I would like to actually conclude that uh, one of the giant companies that is actually available in Malaysia, Food Panda, has been actually uh, has been uh, implementing a lot of HR strategies, okay, and trying to make sure that the company is actually striving, okay, and, and rather not actually perishing, okay. With that being said, uh, any company I would like to actually reiterate again, any company who uh, who refuse to actually change according to the time will definitely will not go through to the top and will not will not actually remain with the status quo of a market leader they'll definitely perish and i think food panda is actually a very good example that they're actually striving and i think we as a customers also helping them uh in doing that yep that's all from my end thank you okay thank you good presentation any question any question for group nine no Any question? Doctor, I have a question. Yes. I want to, because I'm curious about Grab and also the Food Panda. So in terms of the well-being of the rider itself, it is part of their internal and external challenge? Yes. This is actually an internal and also external challenge. I would say it's actually more towards an external challenge rather than an internal challenge because anyone who's actually working with Grab and also with Foot Panda, mostly they're actually contractual staff. They do not actually bind with any type of contracts and they can actually leave anytime they want to. So with that being said, uh, it's more of an external because to control someone who's actually working, uh, they're actually more considered as a vendor. They are working for us, okay, but they're actually not obligated to actually listen to everything that we actually say. But uh, on the other hand, we are also responsible for them because uh, we are giving a service that is actually dependent on the people who's working for us. So I feel like that is a very big challenge that needs to be addressed by uh, Food Panda. And in this case, they're actually addressing it very well. Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah. And the last one, it is uh, any, for example, if I'm the rider, so if mm -hmm. accident happened during my working time, this is any effort from the company actually compensate the rider's family or the rider's itself? Uh, normally, the insurance that was actually taken covers the rider, okay, the working time, okay, and also the uh, the pay that they're actually uh, getting into and also the admission. If you're actually going to the admission, then you'll be actually covered, okay, but they're actually still having a lot of loopholes. I'll be very frank with you on this. There's a lot of loopholes because anytime that you're actually doing, uh, when you're actually on a break and when you're actually having uh, any accident at the point of time, okay, you'll be actually not covered. So there are loopholes that is already available, okay, but I think the first step that was actually taken to give the insurance to the riders is actually in the best step first. And uh, I think along the way, we can actually uh, uh, close all the loopholes that is already available. I think this has already been brought forward and uh, they're actually discussing as of now. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Next group. Uh, group 12, uh, Miss. Yes. Okay. I'm sharing the screen now. Huh? Okay, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Loshini and everyone. Uh, I'm in Barat Mili here from Group 12. Are going to present about strategic human resource management of Atalaga. Next, please. Uh, the outline of the presentation will be as per slide. Uh, Hatalaga Holding Berhad was founded in 1988 by Mr. Kwam Kam Hong, and it was the largest producer of nitril glove in the world. The core business of this Harta Lega primarily engaged in the manufacture of sale of latex gloves and nitra gloves. Uh, the market size and geographical operation. The market size is about 8.23 billion. The company has one of production facility in Malaysia located in Sepang, Selangor. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the challenges account encountered by the Harta Lega 
uh, divided into external and internal challenges. The external challenges uh, is the competitive industry market, oversupply and pricing pressure, elevated operating costs, regulatory and market imbalance. And the internal, internal challenges uh, faced by Hakalega is uh, the employee retention and technology advancements. Based on these two uh, challenges, the future challenges that foreseen is the challenge changing customer expectation, market saturation, financial performance, and the recovery, recovery timeline. Next slide, please. Then the challenges uh, which impacts on the HRK fun function is the talent acquisition retention and training de development. On the training acquisition and retention, competitive industry and managed market demand may affect our company's ability to attract and retain the top talents due to oversupply and slow market process and difficulties in attracting employees, difficulties in retaining employees, and require the, 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 the problem is a need uh, uh, strategic talent acquisition, retention effort to maintain a uh, talented force. On the training and development area, uh, challenges related to market dynamic and operational adjustment, which need generate training and development programs, uh, should be equipped new employees with the skills, and success uh, program need to be provided to allow the business continuity in the world organization. The next will be continued by my teammate, Mr. Basir. Hello, hi everyone. I will continue my team's presentation. So in order to overcome the challenges by Hatelika, HR recommendation aligning with the objective. So here we already uh, identified four elements. First, the talent acquisition and retention, which will focusing on employer branding, competitive compensation and career development opportunities. The next element will be the compensation and benefit management, focusing on the review and potentially uh, adjust the benefit packages. Uh, moving forward, training and development, encourage professional growth and leadership skill through program. And the last one is a technology innovation, ecology. Uh, we encourage to introduce uh, innovative campaigns and uh, rewarding system. Uh, what will be the succession plan for Hatelega? We have identified uh, two main core. One is uh, under human resources and also the next, the other one is the more to the technology automation uh, system. On the main uh, resource system, we, we will try to uh, be more uh, actively uh, strategize on the human resources transform transformation program, uh, emphasize more the, on the induction program, emphasizing on the, the company's objective and mission, uh, uh, ex I mean, extend the internship program to, to ensure we have the sufficient uh, main resources. Uh, encourage and develop the competency development program, a leadership competency program, uh, educational and financial assistance, and the last one we will encourage through the apps development through the apps, uh, hard talents. On the automation side, uh, on the technology side, we the succession plan will be uh, innovative campaign, increase production capability, reduce wastages and uh, recycle energy usage. Um, okay. Uh, so this, this was our references and uh, resource. All the uh, slides being developed through this uh, reference. These are uh, our team members and open for the Q&A, please. Okay, any question? <clears throat> Who is Sha Shazana? Shazana Shamin Binti Intiza Who is Shazana? Shazana is here. Shazana, Digger? Yes, me. 
Okay, okay. Okay, any question? Any question, student? Uh, I have a question. Okay, please ask. Yeah, how, do you, how, how do you guys maintaining the you know the sustain the sustainability and the environmental with regards of the uh, operational? Dengar ke? Kenapa uh, terjawab Raja is asking something? What was, sorry, sorry. What was it, the question again? How, how do you, how, how the, the Hatelaga maintaining their, you know, uh, the uh, sustainability and the environmental? Uh, I think I think yeah. th this is mm. part of the mm. Hatalega uh, work culture. I think uh, part as 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 I think as you as you can see in the annual report itself of Hatalega, mm -hmm. they're talking about health aspects, uh, health and safety uh, as one of their main uh, main things to do uh, for the years uh, for 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 the coming years as well. So they're talking about. Uh, I think I think there's a several effort have been have been done by them, such as uh, you know they they launch uh, Tarega life saving rules. Uh, they also promoting uh, about safety and employees. Series of initiatives been done throughout throughout all the the, the, the regional office, the regional uh, uh, factories. So they also carry out uh, safety environment accident prevention initiative. So they're talking about 40% of reductions in work-related medical certificate cases. So I think uh, they specifically mentioned this is one of the key item. High priority. They put it as a high priority uh, material matters in their annual reports. So I think <clears throat> they, they're also talking about water and influence. You know, about how 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 uh, the production uh, factories effects coming out. So. Hope that that's answer your yeah. question. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> okay, any question? Student, do you have any question? No, doctor. No. Okay, another group. Anyone would like to do? Can give to group 16, doctor. Can, 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 can. Okay, uh, let's uh, share the screen first. I'm taking your attendance. Huh? Those who are leaving, I will put an. Ah, ni lagi senang? Saya datang, cikgu. Saya datang. Ah, baik, baik. Baik, baik. <laughs> Tapi yang keluar, and Ini lagi best. Okay, good afternoon everyone. So I'm Sharizan from group 16. So today we are sharing the strategic human resource management for Intel Corporation. So we are uh, go to the introduction first. Why, why suddenly jam? Okay, okay, it's okay. So uh, Intel is leading the way the revitalized American semiconductor manufacturing and research development. So to build a more resilient global on supply chains. So Intel also the integrated electronic, the then focus on the 10 core key business, which is a processor, chipset, system and devices, memory and storage, graphic processing units, server products, programmable devices, software, wireless products, networks, and I.O. So, which is Intel uh, set the industry standard uh, to the processor innovation and performance, powering the, our laptops and desktop, what we are using now, also the workstation and services. So, the market size for Intel is actually as, as, as of December 2023 has a 
184.40 billion which is this market intel the world is uh, ranked about 59th most valuable company by uh, market capital according to the data so in term of geographical operation intel is around the world which is located in 46 countries so i think for uh, i just uh, explain a little bit about the introduction uh, then i uh, pass to the next presenter daniel all right thank you Mr. Azrul is here uh, wait for a while Azrul is here Azrul. I did that. Oh, I did. Okay, start. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shah. Okay, so for external challenges, this one is globalization. So in today's global business landscape, effective leadership means managing diverse teams across borders and adapting strategies to different legal and cultural contexts. This requires treating an inclusive environment, understanding local regulation and custom, and tailoring approaches for success in an interconnected world. Next is addressing cultural diversity. So creating a collaborative and respectful global workplace hinges on embracing inclusive policies and practices. This measure promote diversity, open communication, and a harmonious work environment, enabling uh, organizations to thrive on a global scale. For internet challenge, uh, leadership changes. When uh, a change in leadership, like uh, appointing a new CEO, often requires realigning the company's vision and direction. This transition may take some time as the new leader evaluates the organization and establishes a clear strategy for future success. Next is competition. In order to stay competitive, Intel had to come up with new products and improve the ones it already had. This was because big players like AMD in the CPU market and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, in the semiconductor manufacturing field will become stronger. Intel had to rethink its strategies, put more money into research and development, and improve its manufacturing processes in order to keep making cutting-edge goods and staying on top of the market in a world that was changing quickly and becoming more competitive. So I will pass to next presenter. Oh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, basically uh, there will be two key HR functions will be impacted by the challenges. So as per shared just now, one of the external challenges faced by uh, Intel will be long distance communication with employee around the globe. So basically uh, we have, I mean, Intel has uh, employee all, over, all around the world. So basically, they will be expecting to have uh, different cultures by different races and different uh, people around the globe. Yeah. So this is one of the external ch uh, challenges that HR need to address and face uh, constantly. Yeah. Uh, especially different time zone, uh, different people, different races and language use as well. Yeah. So culture can also affect how people deliver information and their attitude towards conflict. So when it comes to internal challenges, uh, as shared just now, uh, Intel has uh, leadership changes uh, time to time basis. Yeah. So performance management is also one of the key function that is impacted by the challenges. So sometimes when the leadership changes, uh, there will be uh, you know, uh, changes in the performance review and also performance management of the employees, whereby it is set by uh, different expectations from the different leaders. Yeah. So uh, HR will need to actually have come up with a system, you know, to ensure there will be a proper performance management system for all employees. Yep. So when it comes to manufacturing side, as shared just now, uh, challenges is faced by competition is that uh, yeah, you can see that more and more uh, competition from uh, the globe. Yeah. So HR will also need to make sure that their system is uh, well equipped and uh, is to the latest uh, technology as well. So our next presenter will be uh, Tewa. Thanks, Danny. Yeah. So, moving forward to HR strategies to handle globalization challenges, Intel should diversify its product portfolio and give any change. As currently, Intel focuses on PC centric businesses. It is a great opportunity to expand its wings toward data centric business such as AI, cloud, edge, 5G, and etc. 
But to do that, developing a global mindset among employees and managers is very important. Where this also means they should have a global talent pool to achieve that. So on the other hand, evolving culture and organization could be an efficient HR strategy to address cultural diversity in India. This as a result fosters more collaboration and improves customers, partners, and stakeholders' relationships. So moving on. Next slide. Louder, please. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. However, in my opinion, in my opinion, can you hear me? Your voice breaking. I just continue. So, however, in my opinion, leadership changes cannot be an internal challenge anymore if training and development program is implemented. It lacks support, collaboration, and communication. The above state point is not a challenge anymore. And finally, R&D is as important as any other element, which we just learned today. With new innovations and process streamlining, Intel can become a greater competitor with other brands like TSMC. As I learned, TSMC is a Taiwan semiconductor manufacturer who can produce chips using smaller manufacturing nodes than Intel. Thus, with advanced R&D, Intel can overcome these challenges too. So next, passing over to Hakim. Okay, hello. Assalamualaikum. Can you guys hear me clearly? Yes. Okay. Uh, good, good afternoon and Assalamualaikum to my Muslim classmates. Uh, okay. So basically, I'll be presenting about the theories, concept and model that is practiced in Intel Corporation. So the two theories that we have here is executive leadership and vision theory and only the paranoid survival theory. So in a nutshell, only the paranoid survival theory is basically Intel is the leader in the semiconductor chip manufacturing industry. So they have to keep being in front of the game. So therefore they need to be a little bit paranoid and think ahead. So that's why such as the uh, the human resource strategy that they practice is they are trying to innovate by diversifying, diversifying their portfolio, they're evolving their culture, they are doing research and development, and they are also giving training so that their staff and workers are much more competent. So another concept that we can include in the one that is practiced in Intel is actually building an inclusive workforce, industry, and ecosystem. And this can be seen by Intel, whereby it has the headquarters are uh, they span all over the globe, such as in the United States and also in Malaysia as well. So the employee engagement is very important for the employees to buy in into the what is the human resource is trying to implement in the company. So at the next slide, I'll present to you. What is the the model that we're choosing? So the, the model that we are choosing here is quarter eight step change model theory. Uh, basically, the model consists of eight steps, whereby they first they create the urgency. As we say in the only paranoid survive theory, we need to understand what is the threat, what is the weakness. So usually a huge company will perform a SWOT analysis, whereby they will identify the strength, the weakness, the threat, and the opportunities that is available in the market. After that, they will perform a powerful coalition whereby the leadership of Intel will uh, basically form a group that will implement the change and what is needed. So they will create a vision in the third step. The, the third step is basically where they, whereby they will create a vision and it will be communicated throughout the company, which is the fourth step. Basically, by communicating this vision, the higher ranking officers of the Intel must also walk the talk, whereby they must also address any anxiety by the workers. And moving on, uh, they must also remove any obstacles, such as is there anybody in the organization that is uh, against the change that they are trying to implement in the company, and they must also remove any barriers. And they can also... Uh, em Catalyst the change by providing incentives such as bonus and for any employees that perform training or reach their KPIs are uh, given bonuses and any other benefits. After that, uh, we have to remember by implementing change and any HR strategy, it's a long-term game. So you need to uh, have a short-term wins such as in the step number six. 
So with the accumulation of the short term win, they can therefore reach their long term game. So when they have reached the change that they wanted, they can build on the change such as in change seven. And then the change the change can be anchored by also continuous support by the management. Okay, so moving on. So that is our presentation, but we do also find in our research the HR matrix that is performed in Intel, which whereby they declare in their website. And as uh, we research, we already found the HR matrix they mainly are concerned with is inclusion, uh, compensation and benefits, growth and development, and health, safety and wellness. So one by one, the HR matrix of inclusion is, for example, in the US market. The Intel company is trying to have more women senior officials from rising from 19% to 40%. For the compensation and benefits, uh, basically Intel would like to retain the worker and they would like to give benefits. So how they do this is they can have market competitive pay, they give bonuses, family leave, and even flexible work schedule. The other part of the HR metrics that they use is growth and development, whereby they are performing something is called employee expectation survey whereby they identify what is uh, the experience of the worker working working in Intel and they are targeting to have less than 4% turnover rate in the company and finally the health and safety wellness by Intel can be uh, observed during the COVID time where they develop a group called Intel's pandemic leadership team basically they are up to date and will revise the Intel's environmental health safety policy in accordance to the uh, current pandemic or current health issues arising from around the world. So that is our current presentation. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Okay, any question? Okay, I have a question. Proceed. Uh, how many employees does Intel have? And what system they are using? Uh, basically, uh, Intel has a company all over the globe. I, I believe in the first slide, we already shared how many is the staff, if not mistaken. And in addition, uh, which system are you referring to? Because Intel is a large multinational company. Are you referring to the manufacturing parts? The no, management they, parts? they are talking about HR. The HR system. The HR system that is we have observed, as we said, Basically, they, they are focusing on the four metrics, the inclusion, compensation benefit, growth development, and health, safety, wellness. Uh, how, and then the number of employee? The number of employee. Uh, we have to get back to you with that. Give me a moment. Number of employee as per 2022 was 131,000. Okay. I think what the question is, they doesn't want to know how many numbers exactly. Okay. For example, globally, like how many branches they have in Malaysia, for example, like, you know, in general, because Intel, I understand, is a huge multinational all over the world, isn't it? So it's almost impossible to define the numbers of employee. Well, we do know they are located in 46 countries as declared, sir. Um, and, uh, madam. Okay, any other question? Uh, last question. Hmm. Boleh. Boleh. Proceed. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, I look at your 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 challenges, right? So, how about the, uh, how has Intel adapted to the you know changing of the market trend, such as from the mobile cloud computing to, uh, cloud. Sorry, mobile computing to cloud computing. So, how they uh you know adapted. To changing a uh, market trend based on the technology on AI uh, right now. Well, we do know that Intel is performing research and development. We have to understand that Intel, they when they are giving away the processor, for example, the latest Intel Generation Seven or Intel Generation Ten, uh, the i seven or i nine, they are already the product is actually already finished. Previously, two years. So currently, if you are they are already way ahead of the market. So I'm 
very confident that they actually has the basically uh how you should say they are optimizing the chips to be much more capable of the 5G connection that is upcoming and they are also uh way way ahead of the curve or the business in the semiconductor does that answer your question sir okay all right thanks okay uh, thanks for group 12 any group would like to do presentation group C okay group C can i know who is jaya uh, jaya what is jaya ah uh, jaya 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 bharti or something ada ke dia tak ada dia tak ada nanti tiba-tiba wujud pula okey semua dah ada <coughs> okey uh, next group next group Next group ada ke tak dia? Doctor today was until group 12 only. Yes, I know. But those who are wanted to do means you can proceed. Ini mesti tak mau ikut saja apa yang saya cakap. Tak ada preparation awal-awal punya. Ah, am I right? Tak ada buat preparation awal-awal. Uh, group 16 unshare first your screen yes unshare first don't show your details ah uh, wait yeah doctor out of topic so for the ss what we call case study 1 and 2 we're going to uh, do the presentation no 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 case study will be start next uh, following week Okay, uh, what about uh, next week's group? Anyone interested, then you can do. If okay. don't. Okay, uh, Doctor, for today, group, the team would like to present. Okay, continue. Uh, okay. Continue, continue. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Can everybody see the presentation slide? Yes. Okay, yes. so okay, so we are for uh Shukri cannot hear you already. Shukri, what happened? Hang, hang. Hello. Okay, okay, carry on. Okay. Uh, okay, Petronas Gang Number High is subsidiary of Petronas uh, Group. Uh, we are uh, specifying uh, Petronas Gangan because Petronas is too big. So Petronas Gangan is focusing on uh, retail, fuel, uh supply in Malaysia. Do you want to move to next slide? Okay. 
this is our group member, uh, the 11 team member within this group and all our contributing team for this uh, presentation. Okay, this is the table of content. Uh, we will start with the company overview, the challenges, HR function, and also recommendation. Okay, uh, I will present the overview of Petronas Agang Bahad. Okay, uh, it was established in 1983, uh, headquarters in Kuala Lumpur, and it is a currency listed company, uh, but the majority share is owned by Petroleum National Bahad, which uh, Petronas. The core key businesses are the fuel station, the LPG, which is the cooking gas, the lubricant, and also the aviation fuel. In terms of the market present, the largest fuel station network in Malaysia is Petronas with more than 1,000 stations. They are also the largest distributor for the cooking gas, the largest supplier for aviation fuel for all major airports in Malaysia, and they are included as the top 30 index in KLSE. Okay, in terms of revenue, the last year revenue is 36.7 million. However, there are slight con there's some concern on the profit after tax, which is only 787.8 million, which is only 2.1% in terms of profit margin. And also the revenue has been stagnant for the past five years. So there's something yang tak kena with uh this company with a very huge revenue but very small profit margin okay the total workforce for petronas dagangan only is 2500 employee excluding the dealer the function include the marketing sales operation logistic and also administration okay uh petronas dagangan bahad is only operating in malaysia uh the did not venture into international market yet. So all the source is from the Dagangan Annual Report 2022. So I will pass to my team member for the next point. Okay, please. Okay. Thank you, Shukri. Okay, now I will present on the challenges faced by Petronas Dagangan. So Petronas Dagangan have internal and external challenges that they faced. Uh, some of the internal challenges are, number one, talent and retention and development, where attracting and retaining talented professionals is a challenge. Uh, and the lack of skilled employees may also affect the efficiency of operations. And the other internal challenge is, is to manage the shareholders' expectations without going against the regulatory compliance. Uh, so, as we know, shareholders always want higher profits and the management should also comply with the government regulatory as to avoid bad reputation. Uh, next, let's look at the external challenges. Shukri? Okay. Um, for the external challenges, which is the first is the growing of the EV technology. Uh, the revenue of Petronas Dagangan may be impacted due to the introduction of electrical electric vehicle that is EV. As customer, and the second challenge is the market saturation, which resulted in stagnant sales, uh, income growth, and lesser profit margin for the past years. Next, I'll pass over to Vino for her next part. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Right. Um. So, uh, my turn now. So, uh, now we're gonna focus on two key HR areas. Um, functions that impacted. Uh, so we identified two, two uh, HR functions that impacted. This is uh, talent management and development, and also change management. Uh, whereby we need to navigating transition in new business ventures. So I will talk about the talent management and development first. So, um, as we all know, it is crucial to attract and retaining the right talent for any organization, including this Petronas Dagangan. So, uh, the it is important the skills of the talent align with the organization's need, as the company success depending on having a skilled workforce aligned with the organization's goal. 
And also, secondly, we need to focus on the training and development for the continuous employees upskilling, whereby the company will enjoy, um, in this case, Petronas Dagangan will enjoy direct benefits by enhancing current employees' capabilities. So investing in our own employees through targeted training ensures they stay ahead in their roles and prepares them for future challenges. And uh, next is it is also important to have clear communication on company policies with all employees. So HR is responsible to create awareness about the training program initiatives that is available in Petronas, uh, Petronas Dagangan. Conducting awareness campaign ensures a shared understanding of our policies and promotes, promotes employees' participation in training initiatives. The second um, function that we identify is the change management, which is a navigating transition in new business ventures. The first one I would like to talk about the critical role of change management in HR. We would like to stress that it is important of change management in context of exploring new business ventures. In this case, uh, um, for example, Petronas needs to find ways to venture into EV market that's evolving now. Um, we already mentioned that as the threat, the threat just now. So in the dynamic landscape of new business ventures, change management is not just a process. It's a critical function within HR. And the last one, I would like to talk about uh, the responsibility of HR professionals in smooth transition, wherever the, wherever and whenever there is a changes in the management. So HR professionals play significant responsibility uh -huh. during this period of change. It is important to manage employees' expectation and foster adaptability during this period to ensure smooth transitions within the workforce. Um, so I pass, next I pass to my next link. Hi, my name is Zaha. I'm going to talk about strategic HR response to the changes. Responding to the challenges above, okay, we need to talk about talent reskilling and development, workforce analysis and planning, and innovation. For talent reskilling and development, we are going to identify skill gaps, implement targeted training foster a culture of continuous learning. And for workforce analysis in time, we have to assess current workforce dynamics, develop strategic workforce plans, promote adaptability for market changes. And as for the innovation, we are going to encourage innovative thinking, reward and recognize innovation. I'm going to uh, focus a bit on the EV, okay? Um, in response to the challenges posed by the technological changes towards electrical vehicle and market uh, situation. Strategic HR perspective can play a role in helping organization navigate this transition effectively. Some consideration for HR professional, yeah? We need to focus on attracting and retaining talent with expertise in EV technology such as engineers, data analysts, and specialists in battery technology. This may involve revisiting recruitment strategies, partnering with educational institutions, and offering training problems to upskill existing employees. We also have to consider on the change management. We need to look into communicating the vision and benefits of the transition, providing training and resources to employees, and facilitating a smooth transition for those affected by job changes or redundancies. Uh, that's all for me. Next, please. Okay, I'm Shanti here. Uh, I'm going to present on uh, the theories that we uh, uh, for the Petronas Dagangan today. Okay, the theory that we choose today is social exchange theory and it, uh, its relevance to uh, Petronas Dagangan. So the uh, social exchange uh, theory uh, says people interact based on give and takes. So this theory has um, three main ideas, which is success propositions, stimulus proposition, and deprivation situation propositions. Okay, for the success proposition, when one finds they are rewarded for the actions, they tend to repeat the actions. 
The second one is specific uh, stimulus proposition. So the more open a particular stimulus has resulted, the more likely it is that a person will respond to it. So number three will, will be deprivation citation proposition. The more often in the past reason uh, a person has received a particular reward, the less valuable uh, for the rewards becomes. Okay. For the Petronas Vagagan scenario, there are two uh, there are two uh, theories that are relevant as follows. Number one is lack of uh, rewards for innovation, which uh, because uh, new ideas uh, will be hindered from the uh, staff. The second one is regular bonuses may lead to the employee comfort. So this is proven by business technician and low profit margin. So that's all from us. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, any question? Uh, I have one question. Boleh dengar? Oh, sorry, dia ada question. Orang lain tak ada. Uh, ada, ada, ada. Apa this? Uh, cuma, cuma I have one question which is how do you guys uh, manage or uh, since the, the the EV is a part of the challenges kan? So, how do you guys, uh, I mean, uh, manage on the, you know, the black market industry right now and then the price fluctuation in the market right now? What do you mean by black What do you mean by black market? Uh, I think the black market right now, you know, people are from Petronas Station also. They are selling to 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 the the industry company with the you know not following the industrial price. Yeah. The the so, so the EV or the subsidized diesel. No, no, the the subsidized, the subsidized. Okay, because so... we are talking about the challenges, right? On on the Petronas challenges. So additionally, what what are the 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 countermeasure that they are doing for for the you know uh black market and then fluctuation. Okay, so in term to cater the uh abuse of diesel subsidy, actually every subsidized diesel they have a special marking a, a chemical put in the diesel. So the KPD and KK can do enforcement by tracking uh, this chemical. So it is uh, mostly done by KPD and KK. So Petronas Dagan is also not tolerating with any dealer who are found uh, selling subsidized diesel to industry. So that's uh, how we... Uh, counter the abuse of uh, subsidized diesel. Okay? Okay. Cool. Any questions? Hi. Hi I have a question here. Iza here. Uh, it's about this uh, social exchange theory and its relevancy to uh, PDB. Uh, this, uh, did you select this uh, social exchange theory by yourself or it was uh, guided by any of the study before? Okay. Uh, Keza, thank you for asking that. Uh, actually, I was Petona staff and this theory has been suggested by, I think, the consultant for his McKinsey. It is uh, a real theory what happened in Petronas. Oh, so they, they adapted this uh, social exchange theory uh, in Petronas Dagangan Berhad itself or the whole Petronas uh, organization? The whole Petronas. But of course, the uh, study is more comprehensive and extensive. Uh, not <laughs> just a simple <laughs> so, statement uh, like this. Shukri, can I add on something? Mm -hmm. Okay, you see, the social exchange theory is very suitable for the relationship between employer and employee. Yes. Okay, so dia punya soalan tu, you reka sendiri ke? Uh, tak, because... Ah, uh, social exchange theory, siapa yang orang pertama yang yang create social exchange theory? Oh, I not, I cannot remember lah. You cannot remember. You ah. tak saya ni siapa untuk social exchange theory ni. Okay, the rest team member can have it. Ah, saya adalah researcher yang buat social exchange theory untuk PhD saya. So, okay. orang orang pertama yang uh, kenal pasti social exchange theory, nama dia 
Biar I beritahu apa nama dia <coughs> Itu dia punya soalan Sebab bukti kamu tu tak ada relate Dari mana kamu dapat benda tu Okay Ya nak kamu dapat dari mana benda The source ha, Soalan ha? saya sebenarnya saya nak tanya Petronas memang ambil di social exchange theory Sebagai dia uh, Theory guidance between employer dengan employee Atau And you you ada side daripada mana-mana reference ke Ataupun you sendiri yang uh, pick this theory That match Petronas punya way of their operating between uh, I mean their relationship between employee and employee Okay saya jawab ha, ha, ha. Jawab Iza Sebenarnya Petronas memang mengamalkan uh, relationship between employer and employee Semua syarikat memang mengamalkan benda tu tapi dia adapted ambil uh, social exchange theory ni dari sources lain then try to adapt with Petronas. Itu dia punya ni. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Semua, sebenarnya semua organisasi uh, organisasi mengamalkan uh, social exchange theory ni. So dia tak faham dia punya soalan. So, that's why dia tak boleh bagi jawapan. So, ah okey tak apa faham. Itu je. Jadi Sugri still working with Petronas ke apa? No, I jump to uh, MIC. Oh you are now with MIC. Mhm. Alright. Okay. okay. All the best. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Allow, allow me to try doctor. Um, so this first uh, the theory is uh, from American socialist Josh C. Homans. Beda um start one. Huh? It's loading. Uh, actually, the social exchange theory, leader member exchange theory, uh, the first establishments of the theory, you know, the history of the theory, what is the concept? If you don't know what is the concept, then you can't simply use it for anything. Especially the, all this theory will be used for the research purposes for the variable and construct. Hmm. Uh, so that's why don't simply using theory like that because not all theory are suited to all uh, situations. That's why I'm asking him uh, who is the first establish of this social exchange theory. It was George C. Homan. Hmm, George C. Homan. George, you know, I, I, I try to pass it on. Because I'm doing research on this and my topic, PhD one, related with the social exchange theory. She so, is considered the founder of the social exchange theory. So you see, the social exchange theory was developed in 1947 by Weiber. Yes. Okay, Weiber is the one. After that, the social exchange theory was rationally uh, changed by the organ 1988 according to the human acts and think rationally. So what is the meaning of social exchange theory? Social exchange theory is the uh, organizational uh, more to uh, employee citizenship behavior how they are going to behave in the social uh, relationship. So it's very, very suited for the employees. Yeah. So Isa's questions, the social exchange really implemented in the patronas or not? So uh, what I can give answer, yes, of course, all the organizations, they have the social exchange relationship matter because they need to exchange their relationship when they are communicating to develop the organization's goal. Okay? Hmm. Hmm. Dan Sada. Sekarang. Sekarang you, everyone know, right? You yeah. cannot simply use for anything. You must know the concept. You must know whether it is implemented or not implemented. Then you must know the history of the theory. Then concept you can tahu. After that, apa yang kamu boleh relate toward your uh, situation, 
uh, variables ke construct ke uh, macam tu melalui sources atau journal lain faham okey thank you doktor understand okey <coughs> okay. i think i think better we stop here see you next week